Put your love in our heart, make me care for each other And we never do face so brothers and sisters And we can't get weary, we care for each other All and all And as you can see, we're working very hard on this project, and it will be coming your way soon on CCTV. I'm Angel Naftali from Angel Sutton Productions. Hello folks, my name is Jimmy Tingle and I'm a comedian right here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, God's country. And I just want to say, I don't want to brag, but I've been on national television, 60 Minutes 2, HBO, Comedy Central, MSNBC, CNN, and Fox, and I've gone from national television to CCTV. You're on. Hi. Hello. Welcome, Louis. What a pleasure. Louis Vasquez. And the running. legend. <laughs> Pleasure to meet I you. I hear you're running for the city council of Cambridge. I am. I'm running yeah, for city council. Big job. It is a big job, but it's an exciting one. And it's it's one that uh, is, is a chance to be a public servant on the grand stage and to create a lot of rewarding change. Cambridge and is the grand stage. Exactly. Like I'm excited <laughs> for it. Great. So how did you decide to do this? through a lot of personal experiences in my lifetime. And I want to make sure that everyone around me, you know, I'm a very, I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everyone around me uh, is set up for success uh, and can do what they, they set their minds out to do. And if you're down in the dumps, uh, such as some people that are going through homelessness, um, there are ways to pick you back up. Uh, and, and to bring them onto their feet and to provide the proper support for them to be just like you and me. Okay, and how will we do that? Proper job training, uh, so. professional development, uh, just you know, little things to big things, uh, projects, initiatives that, that are aimed at uh, getting to know the people, uh, not just throwing money at, a, at an issue. Um, I think that it's time to put a brand on local politics that focuses on being a person of the community, of, of being out on the streets and having people see you walking around with a sense of belonging as one of them, one of us. That's something that I'll never lose, elected or not right. elected. <laughs> <laughs> you feel part of the city of Cambridge. I am Cambridge. You are Cambridge. What about the rest of us? <laughs> You're Cambridge too. You're on CCTV. Yeah, that's right. We are on CCTV. Oh, gee. Some of us are. Okay. So you enjoy this job? I love it. Campaigning? I love campaigning. Again, I'm a people person. So I work with kids and teenagers and families during the day. I run a youth center. Mm -hmm. That alone is rewarding and very tiring. But then I get home, I take off my basketball shorts, I take off my t-shirt, and I morph into a candidate <laughs> for Cambridge City Council. And I hit the neighborhoods, and I go and knock on doors, and I hang out with people on their porches, uh, shake a lot of hands, uh, kiss a lot of babies, <laughs> I have babies of my own. Uh, it's, it's just very, very rewarding work. Are you a community organizer? I am a community organizer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to follow all that, huh? What's that? You will follow Obama to the White House? I will follow his lead. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, actually, I want to make it clear. I'm not in this to pursue a political career. I'm in this to serve my city. I made a mm -hmm. promise to myself that I was going to serve as much as I can throughout my 20s, and whether that carries me into my 30s or my 40s, time will tell. The work will tell. I'm heavily committed to giving back to my community. If I lived anywhere else, I would not be doing this. This is all out of love. <laughs> You love us. I love you guys. That's wonderful. I love us. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. You've been working with kids, and what do you think we, they need most right now? They need... They what need, can the council do for them? The council can be in the youth centers. The council can uh, 
work on ways to provide support for not just the kids and their families, but for the actual youth centers doing the work, for the youth workers, for nonprofit workers of all kinds. Um, I know it's very ambitious to um, carry out this idea that I'm about to tell you, but I would love it if every city councilor had uh, some sort of allowance or allotment from the city budget, you know, a big or small, uh, to give <laughs> to a special project in How the community, to the that? arts, to the youth center, excuse me, the youth center, uh, to a sports team, a league, something that will help the city out and not just run to them when they have the white flag, as we discussed earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of an amount, your special special allocation. Exactly, and I just I, I think your that I, again I don't know how the voting process would work for such an idea. Which oh. again I realize it's ambitious, but uh, it would be just very beneficial and a way to demonstrate uh, care to the work that the nonprofit organizations and workers are doing in our community because the community benefits as a whole, not just the kid that's being worked on or um, a homeless individual or a family that is a very low income and needs help. The community is uplifted when these people's lives turn around. That sounds great. How would you work with the council to convince them? Do you, do you, do you know those guys? To convince them? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's going to take work um, unless there are like-minded individuals on the council uh, that can share my vision for Cambridge and for the nonprofit world. Uh, it's, it's something that's very dear to me, uh, especially growing up here in Cambridge. I'm born and raised, you know, when I go places. There, there's a new term that I'm using, a new slogan for my campaign uh, that I'm, I'm starting to apply to what we're doing, and that's one of our own. Uh, a lot of places where I go and I'm introduced uh, or I, I meet new people, they say, Luis, one of our own, because I'm born <laughs> and raised here. And that feels so good. So I'm like, you know what? I'm taking that and I'm using that for my campaign because it's true. I'm one of our own. I'm, I'm born and raised. I went through the programs. I went to our schools. Mm -hmm. I went to Cambridge Range and Latin. And now the Cambridge kid is here wanting to give back. And well, that's what proportion so of our me. population do you think is native born? In Cambridge, that is. Well, that's dwindling. Uh, so there I are think, a lot of us that vote that are not. <laughs> well, in terms of municipal elections, uh, it's, uh, generally speaking, is the same pool of voters that are voting, which is great that they're voting. Uh, don't get me wrong at all. That's awesome. Uh, it's just it's time to get everyone else engaged and on the bandwagon of municipal elections. Uh, you can't just vote every four years. Um, so it's time to... To, to bring everyone else on. Uh, with that comes educating voters, uh, educating people about the candidates, uh, and, and that has been rewarding in its own sense. You know, This is also a learning process for myself, and I've embraced that, and, and I haven't <laughs> been shy about that. Uh, and people relate to that. They, they see I'm a real person just like them. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of us are not real. Right. Whatever. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Especially if you can inspire some of these people Absolutely. Who, who've been sitting home during the elections. Right, right, right. This stuff is just as important as a presidential election. There you go. And uh, so, let's see. So, so what are the uh, some of the specific things you think the council should do, or can do? Well, uh, besides giving you a an allocation or a lot of <laughs> Well, speaking of that, uh, how much do you think would be a, a an acceptable amount. I don't know. I'm not. No. I'm not on the council. Because one interview. of the things I do is I love That's to, when I'm going around the neighborhoods, I love to bring up my ideas and to ask people what they think and, uh -huh. and to, to listen to their stories. I want to be a candidate that is meeting people where they're at. Uh -huh. I don't want people to have to come looking for me. I want to be there. I want to be a candidate that is approachable. Uh, I want to be a city councilor that is approachable. That should be a requirement. <laughs> when you run for office, uh, you need to have a big sense of approachability. You need to be a people person. Right. You think there's some who are not? I think in every field of everything that we do in this world, there are people that are not and there are people that are. <laughs> there you go. If that answers the question. <laughs> I didn't want to get too specific. <laughs> okay. So, well, one basic question I always have is what are the the three most important things you think that the city council can do in its next term or next two years? Uh, I think that one of the things is to find a balance between the past, the present, 
in the future. And as, as broad as that sounds, uh, we need to bring all of that together when we're thinking about families and kids and your friends that you had growing up being pushed out to other cities because they can't afford it anymore. And that's just being real. Uh, that happened to myself, happened to uh, many of my friends and families that I knew growing so up. So what can the council do? Um, and that's keeping affordable living uh -huh. uh, as, as a priority, especially with uh, many of the new development projects that are coming our way, uh, such as the expansion, in my view, of, of Kendall Square. Uh -huh. um, I think that there should be more room to build affordable living units into what we've been seeing lately. Um, th there's an opportunity there to grasp on. Uh, I think that many of these companies are, are put in a prime position to succeed in Cambridge because we're the mecca of mm -hmm. intelligence out here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I would love to see them uh, step up furthermore to contribute or to build or to fund uh, an affordable housing complex or uh, to contribute some way, somehow to uh, adding to our neighborhoods. So as we're doing all of this building and as we're uh, uh, researching and, and looking into building up, we need to also see how we can preserve the integrity of our neighborhoods in our city. If uh, we can. I, I absolutely think we can strike a balance there, I do. And uh, I think that hearing out both ends of whatever's at the table is important. I'm a listener. I don't want to jump onto something or a certain side for the <laughs> sake of being involved and getting my name out there, my candidacy. Uh, the benefit of the city is more important than the benefit of my own campaign. That sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> That's really <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> uh, also, keeping youth on the forefront is important to me. Uh, continuing to work on homelessness and not masking the problem uh, by upscaling everything, which is great. You know, I love Chipotle. I love you know Yoki over here, <laughs> but at the same time, uh, homelessness was was shoot away with that. Uh, you know, how can we find the balance there? Those are one of the things um, that really have. Uh, I'm just I'm, I'm burning to to hear out the community <laughs> and to find solutions for. Are there any? You have any ideas about? I want to How we get homes for people who don't have homes. <laughs> uh, well, first we need to get them out of the the dark place that they're in. That's step number one, uh -huh. and that's not always going to be easy. Uh -huh. A lot of people will be in denial. A lot of people um, really need to to focus on looking into the mirror, and and they can have all of the support around them, but they need to be that number one person to really take life by the horns and say, today I'm going to be different. How can I make myself better for tomorrow? And we need to help them guide through that process. Uh, and, and again, just seeing eye to eye with them and not just throwing money at the situation, which is not a knock to what we've been doing here in Cambridge, but I just see more of a, a personable approach to this issue. But we'll take money, right? Oh, absolutely. Who won't? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it takes money to find the people who will do right. this person to person. Absolutely. Work. At least it seems like that to me. <laughs> <laughs> there are volunteers, but there are limits. Yeah. So the allowance sounds like an exciting idea. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, that, that would be amazing. Tell us something about your background with the media. Background with the media? <laughs> <laughs> you've been out there. You've been writing. You've been on TV and radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all, again, I'm a people person. So when it came down to blogging for the Cambridge Chronicle, uh, which is called Bridging the Gap, uh, that was an, an opportunity for me to connect with my city. You know, I don't think I'd do that for a different city. I do that because I want to, I want people to know I care. I want people to know I'm there. I want people to know that the future of Cambridge, uh, the present, what's going on in our streets right now is, is important. I want people that are not in, in my age bracket to have a sense uh, of, of perspective as to how we see things also. Um, I think that understanding each age bracket and each different kind of person from different kinds of life is very important. And, and that's something that Cambridge uh, was able to raise me and taught me and uh, being open-minded and accepting of other people. Uh, also, uh, the TV work that I did came during the Boston Marathon bombings. Um, and that's because I knew both of the bombers. So. 
I did, you know, local interviews, national interviews, international interviews, <laughs> and it, it was it was it was a ride. It was cool, but what was no, it like I wish. to work with CNN? C CNN was was great. Um, being on with Anderson Cooper and Wolf Blitzer and, and <laughs> CNN Newsroom at six in the morning uh, were all wonderful opportunities. But it was a time for me to get Cambridge um, on the map about what we're about and not necessarily be only affiliated with bombers. That's not what we do here. Good we're not about that life. That's <laughs> Unfortunately, the bombers did come from Cambridge, though, right? Unfortunately, they did. And, uh, they, were and local people. they were local. They were Cambridge kids just like us. So with what happened comes a sense of betrayal. But I thought it was important for people to know where they came from. Uh, they, you know, originally, they, they, the media was speculating, oh, these guys came uh, two years ago into our country, and they plotted this out just to to hurt us, um, they were raised as terrorists. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. These kids went to the high school. These kids were on our sports teams. Uh, these kids walked our streets. They ate at our restaurants. They were friends with our friends. And so that is why I went on TV. But being on with Anderson Cooper is nothing compared to being on with him. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am on with Anderson Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. It was it was a lot of fun. Well, I'm glad you're on with me. Uh, I'm great. glad to be here. And again, <laughs> it's just uh, it's an opportunity that yes, it was great to have, but I really wish it came at a time that wasn't so tragic for our country or for the world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they were friends of yours, or classmates? Or what? Yeah, I, I knew them both in different capacities. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew Tamerlan from the high school. He was my year. And so his little sister being best friends with my girlfriend, who is now my wife, uh, was how we struck a friendship. Uh, and I'd see him outside of school. We hang out in school. This guy would come bear hug me from behind, and <laughs> and I would I would joke around with him that I could beat him in the boxing matches. Clearly, I couldn't. Uh, he, he's a beast, and he he's a professional fighter, um, or amateur with professional aspirations. Um, he's not a bomber. Like it's crazy. <laughs> I'm not saying he didn't do it, but it's just the 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 memories definitely. Uh, don't lead don't don't take me to what they did it's it's absurd it's it's so bizarre pretty personal relations it's how long right. did you know it um for a few years i want to say like three or four years it's hard to wrap your head around what happened what they did yeah. didn't represent who i knew yeah. um and then that that was tamerlan and then uh, i knew jahar uh through coaching uh came in july in soccer i went back in 2009 and i was the assistant varsity coach for the high school here at ringe and um one of my responsibilities was to be between the JV team and the varsity team and to evaluate who's doing what, uh, where each player and team is at, uh, so that we could continue to build for the future and, and get wins and get trophies <laughs> and accomplishments for, for Cambridge Ridge and Latin. It's a program that's very dear to me. I grew up there and I was uh, coached by UCAL McKenzie, who unfortunately passed at the age of 32, oh, playing goodness. the game that he loved um, in 2009. So. Oh. I was like, I need to do something to, to give back in his honor. And I went back to Ranch to coach. Okay. And that's how I knew Jahar. And it's, it's crazy because at the time, I didn't know that they were brothers. Had I known that they were brothers, I definitely would have taken him, him under my arm and gotten to know him more. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't until this happened that I found out that they were even related. It's crazy. I understood they, um, were, they were both well-liked at school, or at least. They were both well-liked. Very different personalities. Uh, one was a little more timid, shy, uh, had a lot of respect for people, very reserved, and the other one was a little bit more outgoing and, and more uh, in touch with American culture. Which was that? <laughs> that was the younger one. Huh. Yeah, he, I mean, if you didn't know his name, you wouldn't know that he was of a different origin. Interesting. Yeah. So he, he spent a lot of time in Cambridge. I mean, how long did he live in Cambridge? The brothers? The, the, yeah, the younger Well, the, I think that they were here uh, yeah. for almost 10 years, yeah. And then they went back to their country, and who knows what happened there. And, you know, something transitioned, something flipped their switch from good to evil and caught the latest update on what they were up to on TV. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And I do feel for the victims. It's four young lives that were lost that had very prominent futures ahead of them. Mm. It's very unfortunate all around. I remember of legs lost, I guess. Right. Yeah, so, the, uh, 
So what's your best chance? Which seats are you going to fill on the council? Which seats? Yeah. Or which seat? <laughs> like in terms of location <laughs> <laughs> or in terms of people? That's uh, a tough question. Yeah. I'm you're, hoping to fill gonna, one of the vacant seats. One of the vacant seats. <laughs> there are two vacant seats and you're going to get one of them. I'm absolutely hoping. And, and my gut feeling also tells me, which again, don't take this as a knock to the current city council. I just feel like the way this thing is going to swing, there might be more than two seats replaced. Maybe three, it may be four, but I don't see it as just two. There you go. Just a gut feeling. <laughs> Probably depends on how, how ambitious the other candidates are. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. So, let's see. Um, what else can you tell us about your your plans for the city? What specific things would they should they do? Well, one of my plans, uh, just to take it back a little bit, is to, with this campaign, inspire people mm -hmm. to not generally think. You need to be a lawyer. You need to be an attorney of something, something, or, or some, someone with a lot of money to run for city council. Um, it's, it's important for people to know that anyone can run. Uh, and it's, an, it's important for people to know that um, being a candidate in your hometown brings great value and awareness and inspiration. When I look <laughs> outside of the box into what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'm proud of what I see. Yeah. I wouldn't do this anywhere else, but I'm, I'm very proud of what I represent. And going around Cambridge, I hear that, and people tell me, and, and they're saying things, he's one of our own. And I feel so good because I am one of our own. I'm born and raised, and it's just, right. it comes, that comes with a great sense of pride. And so I have many young people, even people that can't vote. You know, I'm, I'm not out there trying to, 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 to brainwash people or anything. And, and then, you know, I've got people that are under 18 that are like, wow, I want to do what you're doing when I grow up. I didn't even know you could do that. Um, I'm like, anything is possible. You know, that's the beauty of our <laughs> system here. <laughs> so why not step up? Uh, again. It takes a little courage, though, right? It takes a lot of courage. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've run into uh, many things that could have brought me down, but I don't let it get to me. Uh, you know, you have to look at the big picture. You yeah, have to be strong. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's what I hope I, I can bring to the city. That's inspiration to people of all kinds, not it's just young people. Uh, it, it's it's a confidence builder for everyone, not just me. So uh, being elected is not going to be a me thing. It's a we thing. Uh -huh. You're very good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm always going to be a people person. I'm down for the people. I'm not in it for a personal agenda. Very good. <clears throat> so, let's see, what else do we need to talk about? Uh, you were interested in things f for, with respect to <clears throat> bicycles and... Yeah, you know, the, the war between drivers and, and, and bicyclists like is, is, is a crazy one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been on both ends of it. And I, I've been yelled at by a driver and almost hit even as a pedestrian. Um, and then I'm a driver myself, and, and I have bicyclists riding right in front of me in the middle of the lane, and, and it can get frustrating, you know. I don't beep at them or anything, especially if I'm running for office now. You, know, you can't do that. <laughs> but uh, no, that's I'm just... The, they're supposedly, that, that's okay for them to be doing. Right, that's okay for them. Um, but you don't want to give them a hard time. You don't know what kind of day they're having. Um, or <laughs> You know, you just, just have to be considerate of everyone. Um, but bringing, bringing that that battle, that war to the forefront is very important to me. And I think it starts, not to bring in youth again, but it starts with our youth because the, ra the way that they're raised uh, is very important. You need to catch them while they're young. You need to put this stuff in their minds that you need to bring peace on the streets. And that <laughs> doesn't always go to uh, violence, uh, you know, gang violence and stuff. It's, it, that, that, that's not, you know, it doesn't ca get capped off there. It's also, uh, pedestrian safety, bicyclist safety, uh, safety while you're driving, uh, especially new 16-year-olds that are on the road. Uh, you want them to be educated on sharing the roads. Watch out for those uh, bicyclists so you don't hit them. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. You don't want anyone to get caught up in those situations. Uh, they can get messy. Are there more bicyclists than there used to be in Cambridge? For sure, which is great. 
You know, Cambridge prides itself on being a green city. Yeah. And, and part of being green is, is riding your bike. Uh, we live in a place where you don't need to drive. It's great to have a car, but you don't have to drive. Uh, we have a train system, a bus system, uh, a bicycle sharing system, um, Hubway. You know, people have their own bikes, rollerblades. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. We're glad to have you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and Thank if you'd you. like to join us and, and see what my campaign is up to, please do that on Facebook, uh, Luis Vasquez for City Council, and on Twitter. You can see what we're up to there. I'm, I'm a great tweeter, and I do follow back. Uh, that's really important <laughs> to a lot of people that say, are you going to follow me back? And I say, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so Luis Vasquez 617 on Twitter. 617. Are you on Twitter? No, I'm not. We need to get you one. Okay. All right. <laughs> that should be, I suppose. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you I so much for coming. It. Thank you. It's and great. thank you to all the viewers. Keep tuning in to Anne. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> she's a great role model. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'd like to talk to uh, all the prospective counselors. Okay. Shoot her an email. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Contact me through CCTV if you don't have my email already. All right. What is your email? Oh, am I supposed to do that? <laughs> Let the people know. <laughs> no, that's okay. I can find it. Definitely. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. We have you know, a half minute or something. Um, so the major thing we should think about with you is the youth. Keep in mind. Youth, health and fitness, nonprofit sustainability, youth athletics. And affordable living. Again, very community based.